Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Christy. Today we're going to do a keto meal prep. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so and make sure you follow me on Instagram for sneak peeks. Keto lasagna. This is not my recipe. This is Joe's recipe from Two Crazy Ketos. So if you want to see all the ingredients for this, make sure you check it out. I'll have it linked below for you guys. But this one is absolutely delicious and is a family favorite. So go ahead and brown your ground beef. This one is a little over a pound. I think it's 1.3 because it's a family size from Aldi. I seldom follow a recipe exactly, especially if it's cooking. I do if it's baking, of course. So add whatever seasonings you want. You can add minced garlic. I'm just using powdered garlic, garlic powder, some onion powder and i'm going to put in some italian seasonings also this is the tomato sauce i use i use this because there's no sugar added and it is one of the lowest carbs that you can find and we're going to add half a cup to our beef i'm just gonna mix this up and leave it sitting to the side till i need it in a bowl, you're going to mix together your ingredients for your cheese mixture. So you got your ricotta cheese and whatever seasonings you want to put in there. I'm going to put some garlic powder and also some Italian seasonings. Uh, how about some more garlic? I told you guys I love garlic. And then one egg and then we're going to mix this all up together now we're going to start the layering process so i'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of the tomato sauce on the very bottom and spread that out so instead of noodles in this recipe you use deli meat and i use oven roasted deli turkey that i pick up at aldi so your first layer is going to be turkey next is a layer of provolone cheese Then a layer of pepperoni, and I had completely forgot to pick up pepperoni slices from the deli. Luckily, we always have regular pepperoni, so I'm just gonna add those. Half of the meat and sauce mixture goes on next. Next is the ricotta. Mozzarella cheese. And then once we finish this step, you just go back and repeat all the others. Now we're going to cover this with foil. You're gonna bake in your oven at 400 degrees for around 30 to 35 minutes. After about 30 minutes, go ahead and remove the aluminum foil so that the cheese will start to brown and you'll wanna do that for about five minutes. Okay, this just came out of the oven and what I'm gonna do is just sit it here on the bar and let this cool. Once it's completely cooled, I will cover it and put it in the fridge and then we'll have it one night this week and all we'll have to do is just slice it up and warm it as we need it. Really, really simple recipe and it's a quick meal. This is a recipe I probably make every other week. It's really simple. This is my Easy Keto Crackers. I have this on my channel. It's in a playlist for keto foods. Easy Keto recipes are my favorite. This is so good. These crackers are crunchy and you can season them so many different ways. So I'm not gonna go over all of the ingredients because you guys can just go watch that video. I will have it linked in the cards and down below for you guys. This is part of my meal prep for the week. So I thought I would go through it really quick for you. I'll probably speed the entire thing up. So it takes almond flour and ground flaxseed and that's pretty much it. Whatever seasonings you wanna put in here, however you want this flavored, the most important thing that you need to do though is sift your flour. 
because you see all these little pieces that aren't going through. These are the ones that'll need to be broke up. This recipe does call for flaxseed. I just buy the whole flaxseed and then I grind it up myself. Many of you have asked. I use a coffee grinder, but this one is specifically for food. Then you're gonna add in your seasonings of choice. So I'm gonna add quite a bit of the pink salt. That's just, you know, crackers are normally salty. We like salt. If you don't, feel free to omit it. And then I'm gonna add garlic and onion powder also. I just picked these up at Walmart. And on that recipe, it will tell you exact measurements. Again, this is a very versatile recipe, so you can add whatever flavorings you want and however you want it to taste. Then I'm gonna add in my water, stir it till it makes like a dough ball, and that's it. This simple, simple keto recipe is one that your family's gonna love. You're gonna put your cracker dough on a piece of parchment paper. I just picked this up at Dollar Tree. It's really good and for a buck for 25 feet. It's a really good deal. You're gonna put another piece of parchment paper over top of this, and then we're just gonna roll it out. Once you have these rolled out until about one eighth of an inch, you're gonna to wanna to cut it with a pizza cutter. You can get straighter lines, and we're gonna to want to cut those into little squares. My lines stink, I know. Now, once you have those all rolled out, you can dust the tops of those with a seasoning if you want. I also take a flat-ended toothpick and I poke a little hole right in the middle of each one of them. It reminds me of Cheez-Its and more like a cracker. Now that I've got these rolled out and cut, I transferred this over to a pizza pan and I'm going to put it in the oven. These bake on 350 for about 20, 25 minutes until golden brown. Make sure you keep an eye on those though. Let's check on these. Oh yeah, they're starting to get nice and golden brown. The girls like them really brown for some reason. So I'm gonna leave them just a few more seconds and then pull those out to cool. Okay, these are fresh from the oven, and you can see I've already ate some of the crispy ones. I put them on this wire rack to cool, let them cool completely, but these are gonna break apart like a dream, and once they have cooled completely, they're gonna be crunchy. You're gonna have a crunchy cracker again. And the girls will eat these. Since I made garlic and onion ones, they'll eat them with like chicken salad and egg salad for the week. But you can make these plain, and Briley likes to dip them in peanut butter too. You hear it? I don't think you can hear it snap. I'm gonna put one in my mouth. I know this is horrible, but see if you can hear this. Crunchy crackers. This will always be part of my weekly meal prep, cooking up the bacon. And you guys know how much I love the Carolina Pride. I get the original, they do have it in thick but this is great because there's no sugars added in the curing process. Okay, bacon is done for the week. What I'll do is just let this cool a little and then store it in a glass container in the refrigerator and then as we need it for recipes or for breakfast or chaffles, we can just pull it out and rewarm it. I'll also be letting my bacon grease cool and adding that to my container beside the stove because we use our bacon grease to cook with. Are you team crunchy bacon or soft bacon? You can tell we are team crunchy bacon. I'm gonna be making one of Preston's favorites. These are a variation from the egg loaf. They're just little egg loaf muffins. So what I do in here is I'm going to add 10 eggs. These are at room temperature, which is very important. All of your ingredients need to be room temperature. One stick of butter, also room temperature. An eight ounce block of cream cheese, room temperature. Gonna add a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up.
Just mix until it's completely blended and you'll probably have to scrape some of this off the sides. Okay, to this, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of sweetener. We use just the pure that I pick up at Walmart. I start out with that. I'm gonna blend again since I went ahead and scraped the edges to get everything and see if that's sweet enough. Once I have that done, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour my mixture in here evenly. I am gonna take my cinnamon and sprinkle a little bit extra on the top of each one of these. And then I'm gonna leave a few plain for Briley. These go into a preheated oven. It's 350 degrees and I'm gonna put them on for 20 minutes and then come back and check. This batch took about 16 minutes in my oven. This time I've just put them on this wire rack. I'm gonna let them cool. Then I will store them in an airtight container in the refrigerator. When we want them, we'll just put these on a plate with some butter, warm those up, and then we'll add some syrup. So that's an easy breakfast and sometimes lunch for Preston at work. This is a really simple recipe. I saw this on a tasty video and I'll link that below if I can find it again. So the first thing you're gonna need is peanut butter. I get one from Walmart. This peanut butter is just the organic, great value, no stir, the only thing in this. Ingredient wise is roasted peanuts and sea salt. So you don't have to worry about any extra carbs or sugar. So for this, you're going to need two thirds cup of peanut butter, and then you're going to need to add to this two tablespoons of coconut oil. There's mine. We'll go ahead and add that. Once you've added your coconut oil, you're gonna to want to stick this in the microwave for just a few seconds till your coconut oil is melted. Once you get that out of the microwave, go ahead and give it a stir and make sure that your coconut oil is completely dissolved. This took about, I think, 25 seconds because my coconut oil wasn't completely hard, so it's just gonna depend on your coconut oil. Once you get that melted, you're gonna wanna put in one cup of shredded coconut, and I pick up the Bob's Red Meal Unsweetened Coconut Flakes and then just give that a stir till it's completely incorporated. I'm not gonna add any extra sweeteners, but you could if you wanted these sweeter. Line a cookie sheet or baking pan with wax paper, parchment paper, or aluminum foil, something just so in case it wants to stick, it won't. You're gonna take your mixture, stir it up really good, and then just put a spoonful Once you have those out on your cookie sheet, just go ahead and put them in your freezer for about two hours until they set up. These peel off perfectly and then I just put them in an airtight glass container and store them in the fridge. Part of my meal prep always consists of shredding up my cheese for the week. I like to shred my own cheese because you don't get all those little sneaky carbs in there, those caking agents that are in there so that your cheese doesn't clump together. So again, I go ahead and shred my cheese on Sundays, that way we'll have it for all week. You guys have been asking about how I get my cheese grated so fine, and this is from Dollar Tree. It is just the cooking concepts. This one is hanging on the wall, and it works like a dream. I've had this thing for months now. It has been sturdy, no issues. I am loving this. Okay, cheese is shredded for the week, and you can see just how fine this is. I'm serious, people, you need to check this out. This was almost half the block, and that'll be great for making chaffles and stuff throughout the week because the other half is going into a recipe. The main reason that I meal prep is for breakfast and lunch. This just makes my mornings go a lot smoother when I'm sending the girls out the door for school. Thanks for watching.